Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be installing a Nine Lives Racing 71-inch uh, big wing kit on my 2005 Nissan 350Z. I'm going to go get this thing unboxed and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, first up, let's go through what you get in the kit. Uh, in the back, you've got the wing. Um, I've got the standard 71-inch aluminum wing. You get a right and left vehicle-specific mounting bracket. You get a pair of end plates. I've got just the basic standard end plates right now. You also get a bag of fasteners as well as some stickers. Uh, one thing that I am going to change when I do my install, uh, all the fasteners that came with this kit were all quarter 20 inch fasteners. I would rather have metric fasteners everywhere I can. So with the exception of the end plates, because they're tapped 1032, I'm going to replace all the quarter 20 fasteners with some M6 fasteners that I picked up through Z-Spec Design. Uh, they're stainless steel fasteners and I picked up some uh, kind of color coordinated uh, dress up washers. It'll just make the install a little bit cleaner and it'll also help so that I don't have to carry quite as many tools with me to the track if I want to make adjustments. Uh, to do this install you are going to need uh, a drill, uh, a couple of different drill bits. They recommend kind of starting out with a small drill bit, a uh, hole punch. Uh, they recommend a three quarter inch hole saw. I've got a one inch hole saw but I also have a three quarter inch drill bit as well as a step bit so I'm going to see what works best for drilling the back side of the, uh, of the trunk lid. Uh, you're also going to need some painter's tape, a uh, tape measure, a sharpie, something to write with. Uh, you're going to need some trim removal tools. Uh, you're going to need either a buddy or, in my case, I'm going to use a, uh, a strap to help hold the wing on while I'm marking things up. Uh, one extra thing, two extra things that aren't mentioned in the uh, with the kit. Uh, I'm going to probably touch up the paint uh, so I've got some color color match touch up paint that I'm going to use just to protect uh, where I drill through just to help prevent rust from from starting I'm also going to use a little bit of RTV just to help seal up where the holes go through the the deck lid um, if you're using the a, the hardware that comes with the kit you need a 7 16 deep socket and a 3 8 uh, wrench to to tighten all the hardware in my case, I'm going to need an M10 uh, socket and a 4 millimeter wrench. Uh, you'll also need an eighth inch Allen wrench to deal with the end plates. All right, so the first step in installing the wing is actually installing the uh, vehicle specific mounting brackets onto the wing itself. This will help you know where you're going to need to put tape and things on the car. Um, as I mentioned, they are vehicle specific, they are left right specific. Uh, in the case of the 350Z, uh, there is a tab. And this faces outward when it's mounted on the vehicle. There are, no, there are no instructions as to whether these go inside or outside of the brackets on the wing itself. Uh, on the Nine Lives Racing website, the brackets are mounted on the outside. Um, so that's how I'm going to go ahead and set mine up. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bolted on. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, when you're doing this, you've got a bunch of different adjustment holes uh, to adjust the angle of attack of the wing. Just make sure that both sides are the same right now. Uh, that way, you know, everything's on the same plane and everything, so when you go to put it on the car for test fit and things like that, everything lines up. All right, now that I've got the brackets bolted onto the wing, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick measurement so that I know roughly where to place tape on the car, uh, and this will also help me center the wing on the car once I get over there. So I'm just going to measure inside the inside of the, of the bracket, the black brackets themselves. Um, in this case, I'm getting 37 and an eighth, just a shade under, but close enough. So 37 and an eighth at both ends. So that'll help me when I start taping up the car. All right, now that I've got tape on the car and I've kind of double checked to make sure that I actually had the area covered I need to, uh, I'm gonna set up a center line on the trunk lid to make sure that the wing is centered on the car. Uh, I ran a strip of tape straight up the middle. I'm gonna take a couple measurements, find, mark a couple center points, uh, and then I'm gonna use my laser level I said you could use a string as well to basically connect the dots and give me a good center line right up the hood. So I'm going to take a couple measurements, uh, find the center point, and then I'll be right back. All right, so now that I've got lines on the painter's tape, I've got to start getting ready to actually line things up and start drilling. Um, you are going to want to remove the inner trim panel if you haven't already done so. My car is actually in the process of being gutted. I've already removed this. Uh, I just kind of put it in place to kind of show the process. Uh, you'll need preferably some plastic trim removal pieces. I only have one clip in this, so it's going to pop right back off. 
but in case you do have to remove this piece. Just to kind of show you where the clips are. Uh, there's quite a few fasteners. Um, mine's missing a couple. You've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these plastic ones. Uh, and then you've got uh, seven, six or seven of the of these metal ones here in the back. Um, and they just clip in. Uh, you, gotta, you can kind of see the holes around the hood here or around the trunk here. Um, so just go in with those. Uh, if you can get these plastic ones um, using one of the plastic fastener or uh, kind of trim piece removal setups uh, to keep from scratching up the, the paint, um, you'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, once you kind of pry, especially these, these plastic ones down, you can kind of get your fingers up and just kind of pull everything down. So I'm going to get this out of the way. All right, so the interior trim's removed. Um, one, one other quick thing, it's a good idea to put a piece of tape or a piece of cardboard or tape a piece of cardboard over your uh, hatch latch for right now because you're going to have to be a, bringing the uh, trunk lid up and down a bunch. So if you just put something there so that the hood, your trunk can't latch, it just kind of save you some time. This is where it really helps to have a friend. Um, I don't really have one here right now. So I'm going to actually use just a simple little cam buckle strap, something you'd use to tie stuff down onto a rack on, on a car. Um, I'm going to use that to help hold the, the wing in place while I start laying things out. So I'm going to go toss it on the hatch here and start laying things out. All right, so my best laid plans didn't quite work out. Um, things aren't quite lining up with the lines they drew, probably just due to the curvature of the, of the deck lid. So I'm going to get everything pretty darn close at this point. I'm just going to use a tape measure and actually measure off my center line, which I do still trust. Uh, measure from center line out to the inside of this, make sure it's where it's supposed to be. I'll mark one hole on either side and then two holes uh, towards the front. Uh, and I'll measure all four corners before I, before I uh, take the thing off to start drilling. So. All right, so I've marked my holes. I've double checked the width. One last thing to double check is try and measure from the tab down to the bottom of the trunk lid just to try and make sure that it's not too crooked. Um, in my case, I'm coming up. within a sixteenth of an inch on both sides. So that's pretty darn, pretty darn square to the car. All right, one last thing we're gonna do before we drill. They recommend it on uh, the little bit of instructions that they give you with the wing. Um, open your hatch and double check that there are no wires that are gonna be anywhere near where you're drilling. Um, about a hand width up from the curvature here. Similar distance down. Um, doesn't look like we should be well clear of, of all your your uh, wiper and hatch latch and, and all the other um, all the other wiring that's in there. So we should be good, but just sanity check it before you do any drilling. All right, before we start drilling, I'm going to center punch all the holes. Uh, I'm going to use an automated center punch. If you do use just a standard hammer and punch, don't go crazy. The, you're dealing with fairly thin metal. So I'm going to mark all six holes. Um, generally with these auto punches, I will hit it twice. Now I'm going to take a drill. I've got a small like eighth inch or maybe a little bit smaller drill bit in here. Um, it'll just be a little bit easier to drill through. I'm going to try and get through both layers on all six holes uh, before I step up to a larger bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill these out and we'll go from here. All right, so I'm stepping up to a quarter inch bit. That'll be enough to get my M6 fasteners through. This happens to be the bit out of the center of the hole saw. So if I end up using the hole saw on the back side, uh, I'll already be I'll already be set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out at least all the top side holes to a quarter inch, uh, and then we'll start working on the underside. All right, so I've got the top side drilled, so now I'm gonna start working on the bottom side. I'm gonna enlarge all the bottom side holes to quarter inch before I do anything else. Um, this is a good time if you've got the full interior in your car, lay down some towels or something to just kind of keep the metal shavings from getting into your carpet and everything else. Uh, also, wear safety glasses, keep your mouth shut because you're drilling up. So I'm going to go ahead. I got three holes per side, so I'm going to go ahead and enlarge these holes. Uh, that way I can kind of get a better idea of what I'm dealing with. So, All right, so I've enlarged the six holes on the bottom side to a quarter inch as well. Um, directions call for a three-quarter inch hole saw. Uh, I know that the washers and sockets I'm using, I don't need quite that big, uh, but I'm going to go ahead, um, two 
forward holes, I can definitely use a step drill to get them a little bit bigger. And even the, the outer hole, I can get a little bit bigger with the step drill before I step up to, um, I've got a three quarter inch just standard bit. I'm gonna use that, it'll be a little less abusive to everything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of step drill these out a little bit just so I don't have to drill quite as much of a hole to go from quarter to three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. Uh, I'm even gonna go ahead and step them up to three quarter before I come back. Uh, and then we'll start talking about how we actually bolt this thing on. All right, so quick update. I tried to use a three quarter inch drill bit and a step bit to enlarge the backside holes. I'm gonna go on record and say, do not do that. Uh, you are definitely much better off with a hole saw. Um, had some issues where multiple layers and obviously the bit caught. Um, as a result, uh, I am now getting ready to pull out a die grinder and manually open these holes up. That's gonna be a whole lot messier and a whole lot less consistent than a hole saw would have been. So I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge these holes. Um, needless to say, follow the directions, use a three quarter inch hole saw, you'll be better in the long run. All right, so I have cleaned up the back side of the holes with my die grinder. As I said, use the hole saw, You're, you'll be in better shape. Um, just kind of double checked kind of made sure everything fit up on the wing before pulling the tape. Um, you will see uh, I did dimple and kind of screw up the, the hatch here and in a couple of other places uh, due to me trying to use that bigger drill bit. So once again, don't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up the paint uh, on the outside and on the inside where I drilled through just so that I don't have rust issues. Um, and then I will be right back after I, I've had some time to let the paint dry. All right, I've put some touch-up paint on all the holes uh, where I damaged the paint from drilling through. I'm gonna take a little bit of silicone, uh, RTV, and just put it around each of the holes before I mount up the wing, uh, just to kind of try and help seal up around, around the holes since this car will spin sometime outside. All right, so I've got some RTV around each of the holes. Uh, I've got my strap in place. I've got my fasteners at least ready to go through to just kind of hold everything in place. And I'm gonna bring the wing over, sit the wing down, uh, get a couple fasteners in place, strap it down so I can start working on getting the nuts and things on the underside. All right, I've got the wing in place. As I said, I've got a little bit of RTV under each of the, each of the pads. So I'm gonna put the hatch up. Fortunately, I already have some upgraded hatch struts, so it's not gonna have a whole lot of trouble holding, holding it up with the wing. If you have old worn out hatch struts, um, you're either gonna need a broomstick or something to help hold it up because of the additional weight of the wing. So this is not an easy task. Uh, it's very easy to lose fasteners and they will go all the way to the end of your hatch and you'll probably never get them back and you'll end up with a really unpleasant rattle. Uh, one of the things I've found that seems to work really well, uh, I actually use a piece of painter's tape with my socket. And I actually basically just force the, uh, force the nut down in there trying not to tear the tape. So that'll hold that and then I can actually put one of the washers uh, on as well and just fold a piece of tape over it and that helps hold everything into place and I just use a punch or pick to uh, kind of tear the, the paper or the tape back out that way I can get it started on the fastener. Um, you do end up with tape that will get stuck and will stay between the, uh, the washer and the, and the body but small price to pay for not losing fasteners and making it a little bit easier. Okay, so I've gotten all the fasteners snugged up. Uh, that way I can start trying to fine tune. Uh, I know the holes are a little oversized, so I'm gonna double check measurements before I tighten everything down. Uh, I put this box in here so I can reach under and reach over at the same time. All right, with that, the wing is bolted on. I can remove the strap, get some stuff out of the way. The whole hatch is shaking, so I would say that that is probably pretty secure. Uh, at this point, last step is going to be to remove the uh, shipping end plates. Uh, if you are reusing or if you're using the included hardware, you need to keep at least two of these uh, socketed, these two button head cap screws uh, from each side because that's what's actually going to hold on your your uh, your end plate. As I said, I'm using the Z-Spec design hardware so I'll be using something different so I don't actually need to keep these. One thing to keep in mind 
Uh, you're going to need eighth inch Allen with these end plates, at least with the standard end plates. There is a logo cut out. The logo goes towards the front of the car. So I'm going to go ahead and get these started. Be very careful with these 1032s. Um, you could definitely cross thread these if you're not being careful, especially if you're trying to use like an impactor or something like that to drive them in. A little bit of extra, just to make sure they're tight. Might actually come back later and hit these with just a dab of blue Loctite, just to make sure that they don't come loose. Uh, blue or purple would work just fine. Uh, if you're using one of the mega end plates or one of the other plates that actually has to shift, that may not be the great, uh, greatest idea, but since I'm using just a fixed end plate, so I'll probably come back at some point and uh, just do a quick dab of blue Loctite on these to make sure that they stay tight. I'm going to go ahead and get the other one done, and then we'll wrap things up. All right, the wing is on the car. Uh, at this point, everything is bolted down, tightened down, ready to go. Uh, you can kind of see how these nice Z-Spec finish washers and the Z-Spec hardware that I substituted in kind of play out. They do come in a bunch of different colors, so you can either match or, or do whatever you want with your car. I've even got them up underneath on the wing here. Uh, as I said, this will make it a little bit easier for me to make adjustments at the track because everything's metric. One last thing that you should consider doing, they do recommend this raw finished aluminum. They do recommend that you coat it with something. They do sell a wrap kit for it or that you use some paint or some powder coat. Uh, I'm waiting right now to hear back on it from a couple different places on powder coating prices. I'm just going to do a simple satin finish black like the uprights. That way everything looks nice and clean together. So at this point, all I got to do is get the Z back together so I can get it to the track and we can uh, see what it can do. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Please like and subscribe. Check out my channel. I'll have some more. Uh, I've got plenty of racing videos there, track day videos, and I'm kind of working my way through some, some upcoming how-tos, including how to do a transmission cooler on the GTR back there. So once again, thanks for tuning in.